All right, so now that we have um, several blips created, we have several page transitions created, uh, we need to start you know, getting the stuff available to turn in, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a brand new project. If you haven't done so already or you don't have this already set up, and what we're going to do is create a nameplate for each one of these things. Okay, so we want to show um, the title for each one, um, and then kind of show each piece side by side. Okay, so um, here's my blips. Boop, boop, boop. Here's my page transitions. Do 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 kind of thing. So I'm going to go to a new comp. This is going to be our HD TV, 1920 by 1080 square. The length of this. Five seconds uh, should be good for our little nameplate. And then what we want to do is we're going to transition. So if we had uh, one image here, we want to wipe, do our nameplate, and then wipe off. Okay. So we know page transitions. So we'll go to our rectangle, let's say, and let's do something a little different than what we've done before. So I'm going to make just a line like this. There we go. I'm going to go to my Y tool so I can move my pivot. And actually, let me delete that. Let me make it. I want to center it. So I'm just going to double click it. That way I know it's centered. And then I can go to my scale. Oops, unlink these. And just shrink it down like that. Okay, so I'm going to have it just kind of go from nothing, so at zero. It's going to give it a little bit of thickness. It'll rotate 90 degrees, and then it'll do its thing. I'll actually make this bigger um, so that when it rotates, it doesn't clip the corners. All right, so I'm going to set a keyframe here. I'll go up a few frames, set this to like too much. Five, 3% seems good, so it just goes whoop. And it's going to rotate. So after this, I'm going to hit R, set a rotate keyframe, come up a little bit, rotate it to 90. So now we have this. Big there. And then this will get bigger. So I go back to my scale. I set a keyframe to say stay here. I go up a smidge and then make that bigger. Okay. All right, so now let's add some ease in here. Let's go to our graph editor. And because we have rotates and we have the other ones, um, they're gonna look different. So it may help uh, when you're looking at any of these, oops, I didn't do it for my rotate, um, that you make sure that you kind of focus in on one area at a time. back to this. <clears throat> so instead of trying to look at scale and rotate, um, just focus on scale first. And even focusing on just this one graph. There we go. So it should go quick and then slow down. That way we have a little bit of time just to wait for that rotate to happen. So it should go boop, wait a second, rotate, wait a second, and then scale. All right, so now we'll see the whole graph. I'm going to do the same thing kind of here. Okay. And so this is basically going to be the opposite, which means it's going to have a little bit of slowness and then speed up into that rotate. Now we'll click on rotate. We'll do this. And I'll push this more towards the middle. Okay, so we slow on, slow out, and then fast in the middle. Let's set our work area to about there. Rewind, play. Okay, might be a little bit quick. So let's just adjust the spacing of these. So my first rotation, or my first scale, I'll make that a little bit longer. Come on, make this a little bit longer. Make that a little bit longer. That's cool. Okay, 
So there's different ways you could obviously do these transitions. This is just my example of this transition, okay? So we have to go from nothing, which is there, to something, okay? So now we have a new blank slate. Um, now I'm gonna create, oops, I wanna have the word blips and page transitions pop in here, so I need to have that come out of somewhere. So I'm going to uh, make another rectangle, okay? So it's a brand new shape layer. I'm going to shrinky dink it down. If you hold shift, it goes quicker. So it's just a little tip. And I'm gonna go to scale, uh, probably change the color so I can actually see it. So that's cool like that. And if I bring up my rulers and I pull this down, I'm gonna turn on my uh, title safe too. That way I can actually see where the center is about there. Uh, what I'm going to do is use this center line as um, basically an area to type. Um, so this box, I'm going to have just right here on top of that. And again, this is kind of like your design. So how you want to design this is up to you. Let me turn this off. Let me turn my guides off. Hide guides. Uh, Yeah, this will be cool. So what I'm going to do is, um, just to keep it balanced in here, uh, I'll have one word fill in here, and then another word kind of pop out below it. So it'll say, um, uh, paid transitions. And underneath it'll say, assignment one. Okay. All right, so I have to have that come out of something. So I'm going to have that just kind of like do one of these, where it just spreads out. So I go to my scale. I unlink it, figure out where I want that to happen, click keyframe, go up a bit, oops, do that backwards, go up to the end, click keyframe, rewind to where I want that to start happening, and then set this to zero. Okay, so now it goes. Alright, and then we'll easy ease this. We'll go to our graph editor, we'll frame it, and we'll pull this out. And again, what this does is it gives us just a little bit of a leeway into it, okay? Now we may want to have, we want to have, we do want to have a little bit of a break between this and that, okay? Just like a frame or two. Okay, so that happens way too quick. So I need to just scoot it down just a couple frames. Maybe a couple more. Oops, come on. Frame back. There we go. That feels better. Okay. So now I'm going to get my text tool. And I'm going to have... Click off. I'm going to have page transitions pop in here. And then uh, assignment number one will pop in down there. Okay. They won't pop in though. Um, what they're going to do is they will um, kind of float inward. Okay. So there's blips. Let's go to. Let's just kind of scoot that over. Um, I should go through and just kind of adjust some of my spacing here. Scooting, let me just grab the L. Scooting the I closer to the L. Oops, that's too close. Let's so scoot the I a little bit further away from the P. Just so we have a little more room. Let's scoot the S a little bit closer to that. Oops. I always grab the wrong one. Grab the P to get the S closer. Have the B to get the L closer. There we go. Okay, so now it says blips. And that's a cool color, I like that. Just plain white pig. Or is that plain white? Now it's white. Alright, that works. 
So now I'm going to just position it so that it pops into this frame. Okay. So now I don't want that to happen until this, right? So after this happens, that's when my text is going to come in. So I'll just drag this down here. <clears throat> I'll set the position down there. Keyframe it. Go up a little bit. And raise it to about there. That's kind of cool. I like the space that we have here. Okay. All right. Same thing. You know that easy ease. See. Okay. So that looks good enough for now. Again, always be mindful that we can tweak stuff. Now, in order for this blips to only appear here, we have to do some of our tricks. So I'm just going to um, scoot or duplicate my shapes layer. Okay, that's the box. And I'm going to make that a track match for this. Okay, so the blips only appears inside that box. So if I were to take blips just to see, over here, it only appears inside the box. Okay. I think I do need a little bit more time on the blips. Looks like we're kind of rushing it. There we go, feels good. And at the same time we're doing that, I'm going to duplicate the blips. And this is going to be, uh, I'm going to reverse these keyframes. So here's a little trick, is I can grab both keyframes, right click, and then go to keyframe assistant, time reverse. So that basically just flips them so they start and end at different times. Okay, so obviously it looks funky. Um, I'm gonna set both of these to no track match just so we can see what's happening. I'm also gonna delete uh, shape layer three because I don't wanna do it that way. Um, cool. All right, so we have one going up and one going down. Now I do need to adjust the timing because if you look at the two moving, it's basically like one moves up, or one moves down, the other one moves up. I want them to be pretty much like the same thing. If I grab both of these and look at the graph, oops, both positions, I can see how their positions are basically swapped. Um, so I like this one being faster at the end, but I want this one to also be faster at the end. So basically they're doing the same movement um, as far as uh, timing goes. Okay, so it's doing like a swap. Okay, now this bottom one will be where it says assignment 01. Okay, I'll have to shrink it down. So that, and make it all small caps. All right, we'll just see how that looks. And then I want to take this and make it a different color. So maybe I'll make this that color. Okay. Obviously, spelling is uh, important. Okay. Now, if we look at what this looks like, you can see there's kind of this overlapping thing, and I don't want that overlapping thing. Okay. Um, also, our blips is no longer working. Okay. Doing this little trick where we duplicate this, scoot it up, and then use it as a track mat is you know fine for some cases. Um, but the best way to do it is to grab your text and use the channel and do a set mat. Okay, this way you can pick exactly which layer you want to use. So you're not duplicating layers. So I want to use layer two, and I want it to be an invert mat. Okay, that way it shows outside of it. Okay, and I'll do the same thing to blip. So I'll click on that, go to channel, set mat. Use shape layer two. This one doesn't need to be inverted because I only want it to exist inside of this box. Okay, so now if we look at this. Okay, so that's looking really nice. Very nice. Okay, now we have to reverse everything. So we have to leave it on screen long enough to read it three times. 
one, two, three. Um, I don't know why I counted one, two, three. <laughs> blips, one assignment one, blips, assignment one. And then I pretty much blips assignment one to go here. Okay. All right, so about here, I need to start reversing. So I'm gonna go to these guys. I'm gonna set some keyframes. There we go. And I'm just going to copy these. And do it one at a time. Click this, control C, and then control V. Click this, control C, control V. So now they disappear. Okay, so stay out, blips assignment 01, disappear. Cool. And then this one has to go away too, so he will then scale away. I'm gonna copy it, come to about here, paste it, and then watch how I can use the time reverse keyframes. So now it's gonna go like that, okay? Now, anytime that these aren't on screen, I want to make sure that I've gotten rid of this layer before it. So right here um, is when they first start moving. So I'm just going to Alt, left bracket. Same thing with these up here, my text. They don't need to be past here, so I Alt, right bracket. Um, this doesn't need to be past this, so I Alt, right bracket. Just good um, management. All right. And then this one, we have to get rid of that. So... I will hit you. Um, I'm not going to reverse it the same way I did, like this. Do, do, do. These come out. These disappear. Um, I think I'm just going to have it shrink down to nothing. Okay, so I'll just set a keyframe here. Scoot up a smidge. And then shrink that to zero. And title sequence. So now let's preview it and see. All right. So here we could probably use a little bit more room. Um, I may also want to just go into my graph editor and just verify that I've definitely played with um, these keyframes. And these two also will probably need some tweaking. I just need a little bit more time in these last ones. These last ones. And you can see there's like nothing happening here really until right about there. <clears throat> I think. This scale here seems a bit big. Let me shrink that down. Oops. There we go. That was just way too big, and so we weren't seeing anything happen until right at the end. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Um, this is the end of my comp, so I will trim my comp to the work area. I will rename this comp to be title underscore blip. So here's our blip one. So I'm going to duplicate it. So just hit Control D, and I'm going to rename it title underscore page transition. Um, so I accidentally uh, named these backwards. So you may have caught that. So for this assignment number one, this is actually page transitions. And I need to shrink it down so that the word fits inside here. There we go. Yeah, 
It's gonna be hard to read like that. That's good. All right, now I do need to adjust some of my points, so that's no big deal. I just go to my position. I go here. If I make this whole thing, oops, not you, you. Make this whole thing a bit bigger. You can see it pops out of the box there. I just need to make my text box bigger so that it fits all that stuff. There we go. And then I just need to reset my position here so that it comes in and lands right there. Okay, so go to the end of this. Knock that down. All right, so everything's cool. And then on this one, which is the, I renamed blips. Let's just fix this as so a title page transition. And then this other one is the blip one. And the point of this is that we can just go into here and just fix this, Simon 2. And then for consistency, I need to have this blip. be like that and then also come on sitting on the ground here and the ground there cool all right so now we have our title sequences um, and what we're going to do is for every assignment we do, we're going to have these little title sequences, okay? So we can always jump back to this and grab that. So now what I need to do is I need to open up my other projects. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my 2200 folder and I'm going to open up my page transitions, okay? So we should have five different page transitions inside here. So here's one page transition. Here's another page transition. Here's my diagonal wipe. Here's my circle swipe. Here's my stack. And then here's a cross. That's me dropping all of them in there. Um, I don't need a cross two right now, I'm just gonna delete that. All right, so here's my five that I have. Okay, so all of these are already sized perfectly. So this is like right to the end of this is where that's at. This one, right to the end of that. This one, right to the end of that. Okay, so perfect. So these are all set. So I'm going to import desktop G drive to two. And title sequence. So I'm importing the title sequence After Effects project. And it's going to take a second, apparently. There we go. Yeah, so inside of this folder is my blip um, title and my page transition title. This is my page transition. So what I can do is um, I'm going to make a new composition that has this and all of my other ones in it. So I'm going to click this. Hold down control and grab each one of those. Now I'm going to drag this to a new comp. I'm going to say make it a single comp. Um, use the dimensions from page transition, they should all be the same. Uh, sequence the layers, no overlap, okie dokie. Okay, so now what we get is this. Here's our page transitions, and then we switch to this one, and we switch to that one. We switch to this one, and then we switch to that one, and we switch to this one. Okay, so what I want to do is one of the things I have to do in this um, is if you look like here, it fills it with red, but then it goes to the next one and it's black at the start of it. So I don't want that to happen. What I want to do is flow right from one to the other to the other to the other. Okay, so I'm going to grab each one of these, I'm going to go to um, time, enable timer mapping. Okay. Now what this does is it creates a little keyframe for our animation, and we can scale these out. Okay, so what should happen now <clears throat> is uh, when this one ends, 
it doesn't just go away, it stays on. Whatever the last frame is, it stays there. And then the next one just pops on top of it. Okay? Now, it's not going to pop on top of it this way because the layers are actually out of order. So I need to make sure that um, they go in a stacking order this way so that every new one builds on top of it. So here's this one, then there's that one, then there's this one, then there's that one. So you see how we never have any black space in this where it looks like it's gone, gone away. I'll even make these a little bit bigger just to verify that we you know, cover our bases. Okay, I have motion blur on for all of these. Um, I may want to adjust some of the coloring in here just so that it's a little bit more apparent where one stops and the other one starts. Um, like something like this one, it may be kind of boring just to be this darker color. So I can go under my hue and saturation. I can play with the color. There we go. So you can see there's a definite difference between this one and the next one. And then when we get to this one, same kind of thing. Maybe I'll add, I'll just copy that hue and saturation and paste it under this one so that I could then shift my hue. So maybe this one's going to be blue. And then we're back to red again. And then the last one, I'll paste the hue and saturation on that one. the green mixed with all this, so I'll go with blue again. I'll even take this down to a quarter, that way it plays a bit quicker. Okay, so by the time you're done with your page transitions, this is what we're going to be turning in. Okay, page transitions assignment one, that goes away, these things flip in. The next one flips on. Now if you look, this diagonal white one, there it goes. It's taking a while. Um, if it does take too long, I can just jump back into this comp and tweak it. Like, it's an awful long time for this diagonal white to be doing nothing. So let's just double click this. And you'll see that the actual transition ends right about there. So I'm just going to bring this in. Trim the comp, there you go. And what that's gonna do is under my page transition here, it actually shrunk this. So if I hit um, U, um, it sh shrunk it, like it stops right there. You can see there's a weird little glitch. Uh, so I'm just gonna click on the little timer map button, delete this, and then I'm just gonna scoot all my other ones over. Okay, just so they start earlier. Okay, good. And then whenever this one's over, right there, then I'm just gonna shrink this in and trim this comp. Okay, whoops. So now if I shrink this, or scale this up, <clears throat> that's what we have here. So we have each one of our comps, as that. Um, so now let's make this into a movie. So we go to File Export, add it to the render queue, and the process for this is going to be identical every single time we do it. Um, loss less, we click on this word. We wait, we wait, we wait. Um, so we're going to pick for format QuickTime. We want a QuickTime movie so it can play in multiple um, for multiple uh, players. Um, ABI is a bit more limited. Under format options, I'm going to choose H.264. Okay, this is the compressor for it. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, if we had audio in here, we would say audio auto. And then we can leave the settings as default for now. We'll talk more about those later. 
and then output two, this is where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna say Sarcona underscore page transitions. And then I hit render. And so now it's gonna go through and actually render out all of this stuff, okay? So it's 12 seconds, 373 frames. It's gonna go through and render all this out. So then we'll have an actual quick time movie that we could play pretty much anywhere. All right, so that's finished. So now if I go into my folder, Here's a page transitions movie. It's 38,000 kilobytes, which is 38 megabytes. Um, so it's actually a really, really good size, um, especially for 1920 by 1080. If you had something that was ridiculously big, like hundreds of thousands of kilobytes or even gigabytes of, of file, then you've done something wrong. So review, research, fix it up. I don't want gigabytes of files. All right, so I've double clicked it, and of course my computer is going to go slow. Um, so we're just waiting for this to open. There we go. So now if you make a mistake, go back and fix it, okay? Not too difficult. So one of the things I did forget to do is on these ones, I forgot to put motion blur. So they look really crisp and clear, um, and they don't have that same kind of motion-y type of effect. So I'd want to jump back into my project, <clears throat> um, go to my title page transitions, make sure I've checked on motion blur, everything's moving, motion blur's on, jump back to my page transition here, now I'll get some nice motion on these, okay? And then I would just go back, export, add to render queue. I can delete this one, that's the one I already exported. Click lossless, quick time, format options, H.264. Name, rename it to the same thing, yes. And then hit render again, and that'll be fixed, okay? So when you're done with this, you're gonna turn in your um, page transitions file here and then you're also going to turn in your last file okay so in this case if I go back here and I um, save this as sarcona underscore page page transitions final <clears throat> okay so then I would turn in There it is. My Sarcona page transitions final, and I would turn in my movie for this project. That way when I grade this, I can come across and look at all of your animations that you've done. Okay, um, and I can also watch the movie obviously, and that's ideal to get everything <clears throat> to be happy. All right, so that's that one. So then when I do my blips, let me just save this again. I will go open up a new project now this one I have blips in several different ones okay so what I need to do is import all these things into one so I'm just gonna instead of opening I'm just gonna double click and import all my blips and for this remember we need three blips um, one of them is gonna have that fill up effect inside there and then the other two are just whatever ones. Um, I'm gonna make sure I go into my comp. And here's my wiggles. Make sure that this is all set up. All right, that's good. And then under my blips. All right, that's nothing. Here's my animation bouncing ball. Okay, now this one I have this, this thing on there, I don't need that. All right, so that was like my first one. And then I have my wiggle one. And then we go find box from side final, there we go. 
Okay, and this one is cool because you can have like a lot of cool effects like Don't steal the sound effects, okay? There's the final one from that. I also have a couple other ones that I was just messing with. Um, you can put in as many as you want. Here's another Philip one that I was playing with. Oh, this is just like a test. Mm. See, so I got, <clears throat> it's looking orange, but it was yellow. Okay, so yellow and blue. Let me screen. <laughs> no real blip on there. And then here's another one very similar to the other one, but the water kind of fills that. Okay, again, no real blip in this one, uh, but still kind of neat to include in this. All right, so the biggest thing is make sure that whatever we have, it has a stopping point, and our comps are all trimmed. Kind of the same thing here. We get to the end, comp is trimmed. Um, I should probably stop the... this one from going out any longer. Cut that. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's good enough, fun stuff. Um, that's trimmed already. Let's go into my wiggle blimp. This one is trimmed, so that's good. And I also like to put, because we have so many comps in some of these um, blips, um, final. If I put final in there, then I know which one is my final one. Obviously making sure these are renamed to the correct thing. So this is the um, box fill final. And this one was the um, color fill final. And there's my bouncing ball final. See, so it just makes it easier for you to find this stuff and then box from side final. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, go down to the bottom, double click. I'll import my page transitions in here too, or my, my page transition, sorry, the title sequences. There's my title blip. Okay, so I need my title blip. And I need my final ones from all these. So I'm just control clicking each one of these that is a final one. I drag it down to my new comp. I hit um, single, title blip, sequence layers, no overlap. Okay. So now here's my title blips. And then we have this one. And we have this one. Now these ones are going to pop to the next one. Okay. Now this one here is actually on there for a long time, so somehow I missed trimming that one. Yep, let's see, so bloop. So I should hit N, trim my comp, go back to my final here, and just grab all these, and if I click and then hold shift, it snaps it right to it. Okay, and at the end of this, I'll hit N, trim this comp, There we go. And again, I forgot to add the um, motion blur to these, so I'll add that. So now let's go through and export this out. Export at a render queue. Lost less. Quick time, 264. We have audio here. Again, just kind of leave it for the defaults for now. And then Sarcona underscore blips Phillips. Hit render. And then we'll have our final movie. So again, you're going to turn in this final composition we just made, so I'll have to save this as, once it's all done. Um, so I'll have a 
Blips Phillips movie, pay transition movie, I'll have a pay transition final and a Blips final. Um, I'll turn in all four of those into the server folder. Alright, so now I have uh, my movie done. You'll see this one's about 49 or 45 megabytes. I'll save this one as Sarcona underscore blips Phillips final. So now I have a Blips Phillips movie, Blips Phillips AE project, pay transitions, pay transitions project. So all four of these I'm just going to um, uh, copy. Uh, I'm going to make a new folder. Sarcona. I'm going to paste them in there. Okay. And then this Sarcona folder, I'm going to go to the, um, on your computer will be the Y drive, or the Z drive, and it'll say <clears throat> 2200. Make big rates with your mouse while you're waiting, while you're waiting. So say 2200, you're going to double click that, and then inside that will be a turn in folder. Oh, what's happening with this? Why it's taking so long? Inside the turn in folder, you're going to drop that in. Okay, so there's your turn in, just drop it in. Okay, make sure you copied it, obviously, and pasted it in there. Make sure all your stuff is labeled inside here so that I know whose stuff is what. Um, and that's it, so that'll take care of our first couple assignments. So once it loads, then you can see it, but obviously you get the idea. On the Z drive, 2200, be a turn-in folder, drop it inside the turn-in folder. All right, so there we go.